Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to My Golf DNA, where today, Mr. Chris Tyler has allowed me, Jace Ransom, My Golf DNA instructor, to come out and take the reins to teach you the real difference between chipping and pitching. Because you know, there's a lot of people that ask that question and you would think it's simple, but in reality, there might be some nuances there that you didn't know, or some nuances that could really help you improve your chipping and pitching, which is a little more work and a little more understanding. So why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel because the more subscribers we get, the more likes we get, the more people we're able to reach out and help. And that's what we want to do. We want to help you get better at the game of golf. So subscribe to the channel. And let's go ahead and get to work. So if you think about a chip shot, what comes to mind? To me, a chip shot's going to be a shot that's moving lower to the ground. It's going to be a shot that hits the ground and rolls out. And it's also going to be a shot that doesn't have the most spin. Versus a pitch shot, you're going to be seeing the flight go much higher. You're going to be seeing the ball land more back towards the hole or back towards that third part of the green. And then also the ball is going to have the most spin you can put on it because you want that ball to hit and stop. And why would you want that to happen? Well, on a chip shot, traditionally, you're going to be hitting a chip when you're seeing a perfect condition, right? Where there's not much trouble, not a lot of slope to the green, where you can just land that ball on that third part of the green and let it roll onto the hole. Versus a pitch shot, you know, you might be hitting over a bunker. You might have a steep slope past the hole that you don't want the ball going down. There's all kinds of different scenarios, but that's where you'd want to get a pitch shot. Okay, so now that we understand the actual difference between a chip and a pitch, that being, you know, most importantly where it lands and stops, what are some of the technical nuances? What are the movements of the body that go into it? And how do we set up for these shots? Well, first let's talk about a chip shot. So on a chip shot, traditionally, you're gonna be hitting one of your, you know, higher lofted clubs, meaning like a gap wedge, pitch wedge, you know, nine, eight, seven iron. And what you're gonna be doing is, you're gonna be introducing a little bit more flexion, a little bit more shaft lean to help keep the ball low to the ground. But because you're using a higher lofted club rather than a 56 or a 60, you're not gonna have as much spin. But what that does is it allows the ball to land and roll out the proper amount. So when I set up for a pitch shot, I'm still gonna play the golf ball where I would on a traditional shot. You know, I'm gonna have it off of my lead ear, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna bring this right foot way closer to my left foot. You know, inside of the shoulders, I would say you're gonna think about the outsides of your shoes or your feet being right on the inside of your shoulders. And then from there, I like to open my stance a little bit. And this is because on a chip shot, it's a much larger upper body movement. We're not having a lot of hip turn. And if we're not gonna have a ton of hip turn, if we go ahead and open those hips up, it's gonna allow the club to move through the hitting area. So I'm gonna open those hips up a little bit, drop that left foot back, and I'm gonna feel like I got 60 to 70% of my weight on my lead foot. And the reason we're doing that is, is it's much more consistent and easier when you're in a small, you know, small swing like this to not have to transfer your weight as much, not have to have as much lower body turn. Because if I can just put 70% of my weight here and feel like throughout the swing I'm gonna keep it there, and then all I think about from here is, is I'm just gonna turn my upper body then it's much, much easier to hit a little chip shot. And that was hit just perfectly, very crisp. You might notice my hips after the ball is gone are gonna open up a little bit. But my main thought when I'm hitting a chip shot is my upper body is what's doing all the work. I'm just gonna take my shoulders and turn them back and through, but I'm also gonna feel like the club is exiting more left and around my body. And also there's not much of a release when you're hitting a chip shot. You know. And my golf DNA, we preach all the time, release, release, release. But on a chip shot, we don't really want much of a release. And that's because if we add in that little bit of extra club face rotation, which you absolutely need on a full swing, because that's what gives you speed and a little more consistency. When we're chipping, we're not really worried about speed. We're worried about control. And we're worried about keeping that club face as stable as possible. So when I hit a chip shot, what I really want to be thinking about is I'm going to turn with that upper body and try to have as little lower body movement as possible. But I also want to think I'm not going to release the golf club. I'm going to have that club travel left and feel like I'm keeping the club face almost pointing towards the target. I don't want to see any of this because once we start turning the hands like this on a chip shot, you know, that's where you start hitting it thin or we hit it too far or we stub the club in the ground. We just want to keep this simple. We want the weight on that left side and we're going to turn the upper body. It's almost just like you're hitting a little bit longer of a putt. And that's perfect. That's right up beside the hole. That's all we want to do on a chip shot. We want to keep it simple. You know, the best way to think about it is just a bigger, longer putt. And we also want to keep that wrist hinge to an absolute minimum. 
I don't want you coming back with tons of wrist hinge. I don't want you coming through with tons of wrist hinge. We want to set the club like this, just a little bit of shaft lean to start, and then we want to feel like we're just going to turn those shoulders back and through. Now, let's talk about a pitch shot. Okay, so we've got the technical nuances figured out of a chip shot, and a lot of people are going to think, well, isn't a pitch shot just a longer chip shot? Well, maybe, but not really. A pitch shot really is in its own scenario. It's its own little bubble. Because on a pitch shot, I'm still going to similarly open my stance just a tiny little bit because we still don't want like a ton of robust body movements. But from there, it's an entirely different shot. For one, I have a 60 degree in my hand because I want a higher lofted club when I'm hitting a pitch shot because I'm not going to have as much of that shaft lean that you might exhibit with a chip shot because believe it or not, on a pitch shot, we're going to be releasing that golf club on through there. That's right. And I know we talked about before where, you know, if we have less release and more body turn, we're going to end up seeing more control. But what does, what does that also do? It de-lofts the club. So if we get a pitch shot where we want the ball going up in the air and having a little more spin, well, we're going to have to release it to make that happen. We're going to have to release it to take some of that little bit of shaft lean out of there to get the ball to spin more and to travel up higher in the air. So if I'm going to hit a little pitch shot going to this farther hole, what am I going to do that's different than my normal swing? Well, I'm going to open the stance a tiny, tiny little bit not as much as a chip, but just a tiny bit because we still don't want a really robust hip movement. But what we are going to do is we're going to start with that 50-50 weight. We're not going to get that 70-30 leaning on the left side like we would with a chip shot. We're going to have a normal weight distribution. And what we're going to think about is we're going to come back to the same chip shot and just add a little bit of wrist hinge. And the reason we're adding that wrist hinge is because when you add hinge or you add set in your backswing, well, your body is going to want to get rid of that on the way down. So if we add that set, what it's gonna be able to do for a pitch is we're gonna be able to get rid of it on the way down and have less shaft lean to make the ball go up in the air and get a little more spin. So let me go ahead and give that a try here, going to the farthest hole. And that was perfect. Crisp contact, ball landed up by the hole and stopped. But what you're gonna notice is, is what was different about the release there? The club actually released versus a chip shot where you're gonna be holding on to the club or have a feeling that you're holding on to the club, a pitch shot, you're still gonna be releasing the golf club because when you release it, we're adding that loft back to the mix. We're getting the ball going up in the air. Let's go ahead and hit one more. Another perfect little shot there. Listen, chipping and pitching does not have to be complicated. If you have a normal, good golf swing, you can chip and pitch. I mean, if you don't have a normal, good golf swing, you can chip and pitch. We just have to simplify things. We have to understand the movements. We have to understand the differences. But most importantly, you gotta understand when am I gonna chip and when am I gonna pitch? Listen, if you need any more help, please let us know because we're glad to help you at My Golf DNA. Come on over to the website, sign up for a membership, and let us help you out. See you next time.